Welcome to Brandon Hall Group's Excellence at Work podcast. You will hear from industry leaders covering innovative, cutting edge business, learning, and HR topics that weave current market research and technology into each episode. Our Excellence at Work podcast is hosted by Brandon Hall Group's Chief Operating Officer and Principal HCM Analyst, Rachel Cook. Hi, and welcome to Brandon Hall Group's Excellence at Work podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. Today we have joining me, we have Bob, Bob Shestak from the Director of Business Development from Vertex. Hi, Bob. How are you? Good, Rachel. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you. And I'm excited to be chatting with you. We're going to be talking about uh, connecting learning to doing. This is a follow up from a webinar that you had um, presented with uh, with us in June. So I know that it went well. And so we're going to kind of continue that discussion. And before we, we do so, just want to share with our with our listeners today, thank you for joining us as well. Um, a little bit about Bob, um, for those of you that may not know him, um, he is a global, or he is, uh, for the last 25 years, he's been working with commercial, government, and military organizations to transform client and business needs into the design, development, and implementation of practical and innovative learning solutions. With client partners, he has designed and delivered enduring learning solutions that reach over 1 million learners every year. Um, He's also a certified professional training manager, and he leads client relation and solution development and market presence for Vertex Professional Services. Um, And a little bit about Vertex is a global provider of managed learning solutions for commercial, government, and military customers. Uh, They create enduring learning solutions that work with client ecosystems, infrastructure, and budget, uh, formerly known as Raytheon Professional Services. So their DNA lies in applying sophisticated tools and methodologies and creating data-driven innovative learning solutions that accelerates people and business performance. Uh, Try to wrap that up, (laughs) but feel free to Bob to share anything in addition to what I just shared about you or um, Vertex, um, just a few more um, points I do want to make um, that Vertex is also a silver preferred provider of Brandon Hall Group and has won a, an HCM award in 2021 on, with, um, within learning and development. And then most recently in 2022, they had received three um, human capital management awards. Congratulations. Oh, thanks, Rachel. Yeah, you know, I, I appreciate everything that you shared there. Um, really, the thing I'd, I'd like to focus on, or folks to take away from that, is um, is, is we, we at Vertex Professional Services focus on practical innovation that works for our customers. So we're not a a, a platform provider or a solutions provider that says, "Hey, there's a one size fits all solution." We recognize that uh, unique organizations have unique requirements, and uh, we work in that space with the best of breed of what's available to provide those solutions. Excellent. And and I think that's a good um, clarification just and, and a good kind of segue into my first question here around the similarities and differences between learning into doing and learning while doing. Can you elaborate on that point of view? Yeah, no, thanks. There's a couple of perspectives on that, you know, that we talked about in, in, in the webinar that, that we did with uh, David Wentworth as well. Uh, certainly from the cognitive aspect, and that was covered extensively in the webinar, there's the ability to attend to multiple things at a time and concentrate and provide dedicated time for learning um, and, and not be distracted by the doing. And, and certainly we all experience those type of things in our daily life, even outside of work, where we're uh, driving a car, talking on the phone, doing things like that, uh, things we're being told not to do. Um but, but to, to go beyond, you know, that, that, that example of, of that cognitive split, it's really the difference between learning as a separate event uh, versus learning being integrated into the flow of work or into the task. And probably one of the better, you know, examples of that, and this is probably a little bit overused, is, you know, you take a look at what we do and we need to uh, learn how to fix something, do some plumbing, some for repairs, right? We pull up a Google video and we use that essentially as a go-to or a job aid uh, to help us get through things. 
Well, learning while doing is, is really the, the formal integration of that type of concept into, into the flow of work, into the point of need. So it's, it's relevant and contextual. Right. And I've been hearing and seeing a lot of that in our research around the flow of work mm -hmm. and how to bridge learning or embed learning into, you know, everything that um, you do in the workplace. So you're not, you're not being taken away from your actual job, but you're leveraging whatever you need or you're enhancing your skills so you can do your job better and it's continuous. And, and, you know, with technology and how technology is evolving and how innovative and advanced technology is with this new way of uh, approaching learning or modern learning, what are some of the challenges that you are seeing? You know, one of the challenges, um, what some of the most significant challenges we're seeing are really folks looking for, for a panacea or a, um, a one size fits all solution you know, with this, uh, because there really isn't, as, as I alluded to up front, uh, organizations are different, uh, learning ecosystems are different, technical infrastructure is different. The challenge is finding the right type of solution that fits for your organization, your infrastructure and your budget. Um, there's a lot of great products uh, out there and great services out there that work if you subscribe or implement them or add them on to your LMS. And not everyone has the capability to do that. Uh, likewise, there's there's a lot of focus on let's let's focus on, you know, what's what's flashy and, and the high end type of things that really may exceed the the use case uh, for, for which the organization is looking to fulfill or that meets your business objectives or your learning objectives tied to those business objectives. So the challenge at, at its root is really getting down to that analysis of what's needed, what's required to get things done that works within your budget, your infrastructure, your ecosystem. Uh, it's a very basic, very basic problem that I think sometimes gets, uh, you know, overcomplicated by the amount of information and potential solutions mm -hmm. in the arena. Absolutely. I think that's, kind of human nature, right? We, we, you know, we have a champagne taste on a, on a dollar budget or am I saying that analogy, right? <laughs> you know, you always want more than sometimes you can handle or you think that you need. And so I think that, you know, learning professionals, they're trying to, they're trying to, um, answer kind of the needs of what, you know, is coming out of them. But they also need, and also they're being pushed by the leaders of what you know the objectives are. So how do they how do they handle or how do they um, assess what is critical and and kind of understanding you know how or what they need to do in order to provide you know the best learning that they can? Yeah, no, that that's a great question. Um, I, I think it really ties still all goes back to um, your upfront analysis. Uh, at, at the business now, well, not necessarily just a learning needs analysis, but analysis of what is what are the business objectives you're trying to accomplish? Uh, what are the learning objectives that tie into accomplishing those business objectives and the constraints that you have to work within to accomplish that? Um, it's taking the time to do those things up front. Um, many times when we look out in the market, we see um, requests for quotes or requests for proposals that have a solution set in mind that haven't done that upfront work. When you get into questioning and it's, well, this, you know, this doesn't quite work. We can't work with, uh, within the solutions you're putting forward because we have these constraints that weren't realized up front. Um, but so it's taking the time up front to really, to really clarify, uh, that is, is, uh, one of the bigger challenges and more necessary things. And let me just give you an example, if that's okay, Rachel. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of, great. you know, I can th think about some some things we've seen recently where uh, folks are looking for virtual reality solutions, right? And pretty soon we know folks are going to be looking for for metaverse solutions uh, because those are you know big sexy words and, and tied to what's flashy, um, and and they may work perfectly fine. Right. But these are costly involved types of 
um, solutions that satisfy very specific use cases, when in many instances you can accomplish the same results or even better by embedding simple animation into IPDFs or work instructions or making video snippets available you know, at the point of use. We don't have to create a whole separate solution that uses the highest end available. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that you can do that's innovative and simple. Um, and, you know, again, going back to ensuring that you have a good understanding of what the needs are and how those needs may change. And that's, you know, that's part of your strategy. That's, that, that is critical, the critical piece there that, you know, we're not, we're not advising that learning professionals should not, you know, jump in and, 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 you know, really try to figure this out, but, you know, take your time at, at the same time because it's fluid and there's always going to be something, you know, that, that seems better than, than what you have. So just make sure that it is a good fit. You're not going down, you know, a path that, that is not the right path for you. Absolutely. And, and I, and then there's another piece here around the um, measuring the impact. And, you know, that's a really important um, differentiator from what we see from high performing organizations and other organizations. And how do you see, you know, from, from your clients, you know, how do they approach measurement perhaps, you know, better than some of, of, of other organizations that may not be doing it well? Yeah, you know, this is a point that came up during during the webinar as well, and uh, I believe David pulled up some some really good metrics that you know uh, folks can go back and reference, or perhaps can be shared with this. But it talked about the type of differences between uh, high performing uh, learning organizations and other organizations, and and the type of things that they measure, and the differences uh, between those measurement rates, and really. Um, some two of the ones that, that that struck me in particular, I'm going to look down at my notes here, is that in, in high performing organizations, 73% of, of those organizations use learning metrics to uh, tie to business outcomes. They had that direct link. They began with the end in mind up front and tied those things together, versus 28% that were not in that in that high performing uh, organization. And likewise, when we're, you know, the type of things that we're talking about here, whether it's VR, AR, embedded videos, IPDFs, things of that nature, they're all focused not just on learning while, well, learning while doing actually implies a certain level of engagement. And those high performing organizations also had a very different uh, level of engagement, measurements of engagements with their employees than other organizations. And that was a 62 to 28% differential there. So it really shows in the uh, in the difference between uh, the types of organizations as, as measured in the recent Brandon Hall survey, uh, but also in our experience as well. Yeah, right. It's, um, you know, that it's a very um, key differentiator in how they think about learning and how they um, ensure that they're capturing the right metrics to make better decisions and to um, validate, you know, their, their, the learning that they're providing and the ROI. And, you know, and this, I feel also kind of leads into justifying or articulating that business case and how, you know, how, and, and by doing that, um, you know, that business case for change for the the stakeholders in the organization and so you know how how do you use this data to help make that change yeah um you, you know with, with the clients that i see and the folks in the business being most successful in in, in 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 doing the business case for change it is a formalized agreed upon template with the stakeholders not only involved in the learning uh, effort itself, but in the business performance that's going to be impacted. Uh, again, that starts with that and beginning with the end in mind up front, um, doing the proper analysis to determine what those metrics and measures are going to be and ensuring they're integrated into the learning itself so you can uh, make those ties you know, relatively easy at the end of the day. Um, the business case for change uh, usually involves um, some financial stakeholders as well that agree upon how ROI is going to be calculated. 
uh, this, and, and that's a significant difference than, you know, a, a while back where we could say, well, this many people took training to push this many more folks through. Uh, it should have these effects. Um, and that was good enough. But now it's now we need to show that it did. It did have uh, additional throughput. It did uh, reduce warranty costs. It did reduce the cost of throwing parts at a system versus fixing things. It did drive efficiency in people working transactions at, at X percent, moving this much to the you know, bottom line of that department or organization. Um, the, the, the biggest change here is, is an integration with the business beyond the, the typical learning unit. Uh, learning is not learning for learning's sake. We don't operate in a vacuum any longer. We've, we've asked for a seat at the table, and, and now we have to play with, with everyone who's there and their specific interests as well. That's a good way to sum it up. <laughs> we asked for a seat at the table, and now there's rules at that yeah, table. Yeah, exactly. So we all have to play within um, within our you know parameters here if we want this to work, mm -hmm. and it makes sense. And at the end of the day, we want you know we want to see because we want to make a difference. But in order to do so, we have to have the right information and using the right tools and and data to do so. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's 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 one of the key pieces. Well, thank you, Bob. Thanks for um, kind of um, you know sharing some of your insights here. Do you, is there anything that you would like to wrap up or uh, leave us with today? Any lasting advice? Um, you, you know, I, I think just to, to, to summarize, I mean, a lot of a lot of remarks uh, that that I've, that I've offered or advice that I offered is, is about that upfront piece and taking the time to understand the business measures and the needs of your stakeholders and, and the buy-in that's going to be acquired. Um, there's, there's an equal piece with that that's part of the process that gets into the why or the how do you know, uh, you know, these are the issues, these are the measures, these are the uh, things that are going to prove this was more effective. Um, again, it's, um, you know, I like to think that that learning practitioners are becoming more and more learning scientists and how we have to design uh, the type of studies and the data integrity to, to show the uh, solutions and the evidence of solutions, the progress we need for the business. So um, just a little change in focus. They are scientists. You know, they, they, you know, they, they um, analyze patterns. They look at trends. They um, test things out to mm -hmm. see how they, how they they test their their hypothesis to come up you know make sure that what they you know assume will work you know so there's a lot of science and getting it right so that that is a really good point and um, great advice there thank you Bob well, thank thanks you. for joining me that was an interesting discussion and um, and I'm glad that we were able to to um, you know collaborate today and then we had some technical issues last time and even though I, I think um, you're experiencing some weather conditions and you're um, part of the the woods over there so hopefully or <laughs> backyard so hopefully you stay dry and safe and um, thank you again for for joining me I appreciate it Rachel thank you take care take care